This week in Nerf, there's tons of new blaster information, but are there going to be less places to buy those blasters? I'm Jangular, and every Saturday, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Now let's go ahead and jump right on in with some of those new blasters. This week on uh, Gizmodo and Popular Mechanics, two articles dropped, one on each. Uh, detailing four of the new blasters that we saw in the leaked video months ago last year. Now, in one of them, we saw the Infinis and the Thunderhawk. We touched briefly on the Infinis a couple weeks ago when we saw the picture leaked, but we do have more, more details now. It's going to be $70, uh, which is far less than people were anticipating and actually seems... Like, not too bad of a price given what seems to be included with it, and that is a new 30 dart drum. So those of you that were speculating it was 30 darts and not 25, you were correct. I thought that extra bulk was just some of the design changes on the front of it, but it is a new size, which is really interesting. Uh, the biggest part is the infamous name, the gimmick that comes with it. You apparently can load darts in through a funnel in the back of the blaster and that will reload them into your drum or magazine. Uh, so you can effectively infinitely keep shooting, which is very interesting and unique and something that could be very fun if it works well and it works still after being modified. That's the thing that we're gonna have to wait and see on is what happens when this is opened up and you put new motors, all that stuff, new wiring in it. H how is it gonna work? Is it still going to function with that gimmick? Because if it does, that's pretty interesting. That's something very cool and very unique. Uh, something else that's on this blaster that I think is very, very cool is this is the first Nerf official blaster that has an LED indicator to show whether or not your mag is loaded and ready to fire uh, if you need to reload or if you have a jam. Now this is stuff that people have been doing with their modern blasters for a while now, what's really cool, but I love, love that Hasbro is taking this to their standard blasters in this form. I hope people like it, and I hope it becomes a bit of a, a more common thing we see because it's really cool. Granted, I don't know what it's gonna do for the wiring and the complexity on the inside, but it, it's cool. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm fairly looking forward to this one now, uh, outside of the bulky, angled fork up on the front that just makes it look so not good so get rid of that and i think it's gonna look fantastic but let's move on because there's so much to talk about uh the second one in that article was the thunderhawk and this one is retailing for fifty dollars this is a mega blaster that when you uh expand it it's like an old school expand a blast for those of you that had the one when you were a kid you open it up and, and the barrel expands the bipod drops out, which is kind of cool looking, and you just have this really long, kind of massive looking blaster, and it's super interesting looking. It looks almost like a like a railgun kind of from like something like 40k maybe. Uh, it's definitely a really interesting kind of cool look. Definitely a gimmick. Definitely not going to increase performance in any way, but uh, also interesting though is it seems to have a much shorter stroke than say the centurion that had that really long crunchy prime this looks like more like a long shot prime uh almost so that's that's pretty telling of the fact that the internals may be a little bit different than the centurion also very interesting is that this is an accustrike line blaster as well that means we are getting mega accustrike darts and that's that's really cool the Mega Darts have problems. They definitely don't fly the best, they're not the most accurate, but if you give them an AccuStrike tip, I'm genuinely curious to see what happens with these because they can be very, very cool to see some accurate Mega Darts and I, I, I'm, I'm just curious to see what happens with these. Now, important note is it, it looks like it may not take an actual magazine. It looks like it may take something like a Battle Scout clip and that despite the initial like oh really like like that's that's gross that's not like a mag it's not easy to swap out and um this may be a good thing for mega blasters because mega darts are squishy they don't sit well in magazines they don't handle that pressure well so giving them their own space in a clip style clip like the uh, the Battle Scout has, may be the better way to go for these. I just hope that if it does work well, they will offer these uh, as a secondary purchase, as something you can buy off the shelf. You don't have to buy an extra Thunderhawk for an extra clip, because that's just, that's silly. It's just plain silly, but we'll find out when the time comes. Now, moving on to the second article from Popular Mechanics, 
Uh, these are the Rival Blasters, one of which I'm exceptionally excited for, but let's start with the Hades. The Hades is retailing for $70, and this is essentially a double-sized Artemis. Uh, for those of you that have seen the Arta Max mod on Out of Darts channel, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the person who actually did the mod, but it was featured on his channel. Go check that out if you haven't seen it. It's essentially, it looks very much like that. Uh, it's nothing super groundbreaking or innovative or special or anything like that. It's it's a bigger Artemis, and it's it's a Hades. It holds, it holds twice the rounds, essentially. Uh, so for 70 bucks... I'm not sold on this one. I'm really not sold on this one. I'm sure there are people that are going to love this and, and swear by it, and that's great. But this one doesn't really scratch the itch for me, I guess you could say. But moving on from that is the, the biggest one of the year. The one that people have been asking about since that video leaked months ago. And that is the Prometheus. This is a 200 round hopper fed full auto rival flywheel blaster. And it's going to retail for $200. Yeah. Yeah, let that one sink in. That ain't cheap. That ain't cheap at all. But for that, you're getting this monstrous blaster that has a carry handle style firing. And uh, actually, what I think is possibly one of the most interesting things is it does not take regular batteries. It actually has a built-in battery and uses a wall charger to charge up, which means it's probably like a NIM uh, chemistry battery, which is great, which probably helps with the fire rate and consistency of it, as it does fire around five and a half rounds per second if we go off of the video in the... Um in the post, which I'll have down below, of course. This is the one I'm I'm super excited about. As someone who used to work at Games Workshop and play a lot of Warhammer, um, this to me screams heavy bolter. And I would love to do some aesthetic mods to this to make it look like a big old chunky heavy bolter and just walk around at games and just have fun with it because it just it looks absurd and goofy and awesome in all the right ways. But it's two hundred dollars, so. Oof. We're not going to see many of these floating around, that's that's for sure. At least until they go down in price or go on sale or clearance or what have you, as most blasters in the high end tend to do. But regardless, that's the four new blasters from Hasbro that have been officially announced via major articles this week. I'm super excited to see more as we've got Toy Fair coming up. Um, on the point of toys and stores buying them and, and, and things like that and them going on discount... We unfortunately got some news that Toys R Us is looking to close 180 plus stores in the United States. That is, that's hefty. That is hefty, hefty, hefty. It's a lot of stores. That is about 20% of the stores in the United States closing down. And we know they filed for bankruptcy and they've been trying to restructure through that. And assumptions are that maybe these are more expensive properties and a lot of money is tied up in those. And they can then take that money and reallocate it to working on the website, which has caused problems because they've fallen behind to companies like Amazon and Walmart in that regard. Uh, that said, something that is good to know about this is that if you're in Canada or overseas, this should not affect you at all. None of those stores should be closing. So... Yay for international people that aren't here in the U.S. Um, but yeah, this this I, I saw this posted all over the place. I saw it from Foam From Above on Facebook, uh, The Jewel of Jewel on Reddit, and uh, a bunch of different links to different websites, business websites, talking about the repercussions. But regardless, it means less brick-and-mortar places to buy NERP, which is a bit of a bummer. Now, I'd like to spend more time on this, but we have actually more topics to go, and uh, and I don't want this to be a crazy long episode, so we're going to jump right ahead to uh, actually another blaster that seems to be kind of teased at, and this comes from a post from uh, Dear Test Michelle, and uh, this is some artwork from Busby indicating that they have a new blaster coming out that may have two magwells, and that's super interesting because... The both of the magwells are up front on the blaster. It looks like kind of like a range master or snipe kind of look on the blaster for those of you that have had previous Busby Air Warriors or Ultratech blasters. And what I'm really curious about is, is there a way to toggle between these two magazines? Because if you look at the images, they're not just mirrored and split and and sent back uh, opposite. 
they're actually different images. And in those images, both magazines are in different orientations. One is higher, one is lower. Now it's possible these are just indicated as different size magazines, but is there a way to, to toggle between the two magazines? If so, how does that breech work? How do you load the darts in or how does it push the darts into the barrel or, or whatever process it uses to fire? I'm very interested in this. I'm very curious and very intrigued, but he said he should have some more news after the Nuremberg Toy Fair, which starts, uh, I think, next week, week after, sometime soon. Next week, I think. Uh, but regardless, it's interesting. It's new, and I'm very curious. So we have a lot of things to look forward to, but we're not done for the week yet. Let's keep going. Jet Blasters has updated a bunch of stuff in the last week. Uh, we've seen CETA production images. So images of the molds, uh, the, the schematics of the molds, essentially schematics is not the right word, but 3D images of what the molds should look like. And then we've seen now just recently pictures of the actual molding process for the CETA blaster. So we know it's finally in production. It's happening, it's real, it's existing, which is awesome. I'm. This is something that, while it may not be groundbreaking in terms of performance, I'm very curious about in terms of the functionality of the way it opens up and all of that stuff. So that's really cool to me. Also, we've seen uh, images of the Omega kit testing process, a bunch of metal pieces that they're working on for the full metal internals kit for the long shot NX Zeus 2. That is super cool as well, because that means that's actually moving along. And then the ZRO barrels are actually shipping now. People have them in hands, it looks like, and we're seeing the packaging and the images from them that they are shipping out. This is all cool stuff from Jet. Things are happening. This is a company that's notoriously had a hard time communicating, hitting deadlines, and just in general being transparent or communicative to the community. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping here that this is a start in the right direction of being uh, better about that communication and PR and talking with people and letting people know what's going on. Because this is, this is such a good thing for them if they can do that. I want to see them continue this communication. Is there a problem with production? Did something happen that's slowing things down? Let us know. People are so much more forgiving if you let them know what's going on. If you talk with them, you say, hey, we're working on this. Don't We're sorry that this thing happened. X problem happened and we're looking for the solution for it. Uh, as soon as we have it, we'll let you know. These kinds of things, people will get behind you and support you even more if you do them. So I hope, beyond hope, that this is a step in the right direction they will continue for their company because I want to see all these companies succeed and grow and grow the hobby through them. Um, that was a lot of stuff to go through and I could have spent more time on it. I'm sorry I wasn't able to, but we got to keep this show from going crazy long. So we're actually going to have no mod of the week this week because there was so much to discuss. However, uh, I do have a video of the week and I may be a little bit biased about this one, but this one comes from Beret and this is WikiHow, how to take down a basin nerf. Like I said, I may be a little biased about this one because I may be in this video for a little bit. So I love his WikiHow series. It's super fun, super goofy, and super absurd. So getting to be in one of those episodes is an absolute blast. And I definitely think you should go check it out as it was a fun process or fun project to be a part of. And I look forward to what he's got cooked up for the future. So if you want to check that video out, you can head right over here and click right there because that's where it's going to be because now we are at the end of the video. Let me know about all of the new blasters, all the things that you knew about, you didn't know about. What are you excited about? Are you bummed about Toys R Us going away? There's going to be a link down below actually to all the Toys R Us store locations that are closing down. Let me know if the ones near you are closing down. The one near, near me is and that's a major bummer. But to all of you that are new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.